Hi guys, Mr. Yeager here, and welcome to the second day of WoW. That's right, it is Origin, and I am not happy. But I thought I'd start actually in a different uh, style than normal, because, well, all of the bigger ships and all the other stuff kind of spoil you at the front, and today's layout of ships for Origin is very funky and weird. I'll show you, actually, I'll show you with the map onto the side here. Also, the voiceovers in this area, really fucking loud. So I apologize for that. I'll try and lower the game audio so that you can hear me more. So basically how it goes is you enter in from this location and you notice the, the higher versions of the series of the 100 up at the entrance way. But the original ship, which we're basing them off, is down here with the hollow deck. Then in order to go to the other room, you, in order to get a reference for these three ships, you need this ship. So it's going to be a bit of a weird, funky design, but here we are. But regardless, we are here. So, Origin Day. A day that I normally dread because there is a lot of ships in this series I really don't like and I always hate Origin because they're rich upper crust wankers. Um, that hasn't changed with a lot of the ships, but this year they did something which I never expected at all. They made a ship I liked and what's worse, I owned it. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. I know. I had to... Oh, it's taken me a lot of training to, to not, like, puke at, this, at the mere mention of that. But still, they've done a couple of good things. I realize that's a pretty big thing to say, and I'm so sorry for everyone who's had faith in me. Don't worry, I don't own it anymore. It's all good. I upgraded. But I'm going to try and be as objective as possible, like I did with Alien Day, and we're going to try and give this a bash. So without further ado, let's get started with... The 100 series. Now, the 100 series is a new ship uh, for the Origin Jump Works. This is the inflyable ship. Again, apologies for the audio for the game. It is extremely loud and really, really irritating. So, basically, this is the 100 series. Um, this is the sort of starter ship slash uh, bare bones. This is the Aurora of, uh, of Star Citizen, although Mustang Gamma. Uh, it is slightly more expensive, though. It's like, stand if in, in terms of dollars, because I'm referring a lot of information via the uh, st website Star Citizen Tools, by the way. Um, the cost of this particular ship is uh, $45 at the moment, and the standalone is about 50 So I think Warbond is, yeah, for Warbond is 40 standalone is about $50. Uh, in terms of cost for the Aurora and the Mustang, they are, I think, slightly cheaper. So this is a bit of a snazzier aircraft, but you do get a couple of decent features. Um, you do get some, obviously apart from the fact that this is this is a, a Origin Jump work, so they are always more inclined to be a bit more expensive. Uh, you've got a nice little QT drive over here internally. Though again, this is the display model, so a lot of the things may be glitched out or maybe in a bit of a weird thing. So again, rent first before you make your judgment. Uh, but you do get access to some two size 2 M4A cannons. Now, these are pretty powerful laser cannons uh, to start off with, and that is impressive. Definitely, definitely impressive. And it does also come with two size 2 strike force missiles, which is kind of impressive, to say the least. Um, I believe they come out this little front hatch here. I believe. I could be wrong. Oh, no, that's radar. So, where are the missiles? Are they under... No, they're underslung. They might be underslung. I can't actually remember, to be honest with you. It's been a while since I've flown this thing. But I can tell you that this ship... I have flown this ship with the new Atmo settings. I think this ship, ship came with the Atmo settings. And it isn't too bad. Again, I really am going to highlight that this is one of the few ships that Origin done that did that isn't actually that bad looking. So if you go into the ship, it's very simple. Uh, very simplistically designed. You've got a bed which allows you to log in and out, which is a big plus uh, in terms of ship design. You also have this baby little cargo bay to store whatever you want to have in it. People, uh, champagne, um, your dignity... What left of it is left. It probably won't even fill the first box cube. Um, so, yeah, that there is there is an option for newer players to do a baby bit of cargo traveling. But with the current delivery system at the moment, it's kind of mixed bag on that one. Um, going into the cockpit view, it's not bad. It's a... Oh, hello. Pfft, okay, GG. So, apart from the... Again, rent first before you make your decision. Um, the cockpit... Uh, is currently suffering from the atmospheric effects of being on a planet of Microtex caliber, as you can see. So it looks a bit weird, but normally it's quite a decent view. The only complaint I have about this is that the strut that's kind of designed 
internally is all around the viewer point of the player. So basically, there's a nice little chunk of it. It's not huge, but it is there and it is interfering a bit. So it is a bit of a detriment. Um, the MFDs you have are, if you press, if I press and hold that and move, use the movement keys to go where the MFDs would be, you've got three MFDs located here, here, and here. Um, so there are, although so there's, there's a couple of other MFDs, but these ones are really out of the way. Like these are the kind of ones you want to have in terms of like communication or something useless. But the important MFDs are here. So if you need the important information, it is available to you kind of in the uh, the first bit of the cockpit, you still need to look around. But this ship does have a bunch of other in interactable features as well, which is pretty cool, both on this side and I do believe on the other side. Again, this is the display model, so there's a few things that are a little bit more glitchy, but there we go. So this is a definitely a starter ship for, the, um, for those who are wanting to introduce themselves to Star Citizen, but are also uh, wanting to get a bit more of the slicier, the fancier side of life when it comes to it. Just note, just note though, if any enterprising Star Citizen fans looking at this ship going, oh, I say, that ship looks absolutely spiffing and would look great on in my library, you will be taken the piss out of by many people because you will be considered a rich snob, which if you are owning one of these, you probably are a rich snob. Uh, but anyway, that's just my personal viewpoint. Moving on to the other ship, which I would argue was the only ship at the time before the 100 series that Origin did and made it look awesome, is the Origin M50. The Origin M50 is basically a racing ship. Uh, having two size ones, admittedly. Uh, <laughs> no, they're size twos. Seriously? Jesus Christ. Okay. I totally mistook that for size ones. My God. I misread that. I thought it was size ones. No, it's size twos. You still got size two M4A laser auto cannon. So this thing packs a punch, um, even at its size. And this thing is bloody fast. This is what I would consider in terms of uh, in, how I classify ships in Star Citizen is how similar is it to Star Wars. And this is what I would call the A-Wing of, uh, of Star Citizen. She's a fairly old design. Uh, she's been in the game for a few years now, but she looks and still feels amazing. And I took her out for a spin um, when uh, during the earlier days of the thing. So I definitely, I this ship gets a thumbs up from me. If I was into the sh racing things and also had not spent already a fuckload of money on this event, I would also have this ship in my arsenal. But uh, not this year, I'm afraid. This year, once again, the Origin job works. This ship is not available uh, for me to have it for real money. But you can purchase this thing inside the game. Uh, you can rent it for a day. Um, there's Jeremy Clarkson variant of uh, Star Citizen as well talking. Uh, but you can purchase this game ship in-game as well. So if you are desperate to have the access to this ship, but you want to try and do it without real money, you can get it in-game, which is nice. Um, but yeah, apart from the size 2, she's got a couple size 1 laser but, missiles, but really it's about the speed. And if you know what you're doing with this one, um, you can probably equip some size 2 other weapons. You can equip some other size 2 weapons to go with it, but yeah. That's... She's not really built for combat, she's built for speed. She's built for going onto planets and doing really funky stuff. If you've seen it, there are a couple of YouTubers out there who do uh, tricks and tr uh, tricks and other likes on planet sides. And oh boy, are they so fun to watch. But anyway, yeah, so the Origin Jump works... M50. Let's get into the cockpit. If I can get into the cockpit. Again, this is the display model, so it's slightly glitched out. Um, there we go. So, in terms of the view, it is a lot better. Uh, the strut is there, unfortunately, on the top of the cockpit, but that's not so bad. It's not as... It feels a bit more like a traditional cockpit uh, in that regard. Uh, in terms of MFDs, you've got a couple over the top here, and then there's a, a couple of MFDs down there as well. So you've got four MFDs, but they're all within your sight line, which is a really big plus. Um, as I mentioned in the last episode, ships which have a MFD display in front of the player, if they don't have access to track IR or find track IR, stuff like that, a little motion sickness-ish, e, while you're playing this game with that, with that, if, if playing this game without mo track IR doesn't make you motion sick, but with track IR it does make you motion sick, I'm not entirely sure how that works. But okay, for the sake of an argument, if you don't like track IR or any kind of face moving things, having the um, having these MFDs in your sightline without you having to move the camera to identify the information is a big plus. It's always a big plus for me on that one. Apart from that, though, the cockpit's fairly simplified. It does it does again. It kind of it does the job it needs to do, which is 
well, the joke is it's basically engines with a pilot seat inside. So this thing is a very fast ship. Um, and as if you've watched the video by uh, Jax McCleary, you will know that this thing does goes mental. But again, this ship has been around for a long time. Uh, you'll actually find, um, as we go into this thing, that there are a lot of ships that have been in the game from Origin almost since the start of Star Citizen. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> certainly something to note when it comes to later on in the development. But we'll talk about that as we get to them. So... Now that we've had our introduction to the smaller side of Origin Jumpworks, let's have a look at the future possibilities of Origin Jumpworks with their very own ground-based transportation system. This is the G12. It is a moon buggy. I can't really look at it in any other form. It's basically a Lambo moon buggy. Uh, it is a very strange-looking vehicle. Um, it's designed as a luxurious transporter, like a little bit of a, yeah, like, it, it's just, it's it's a rich man's Lambo moon buggy. Um, I can't really say I'm a huge fan of the design. Uh, this was announced uh, earlier this year around Invictus Day. I think it was around the Invictus week, and it's kind of okay. Like, I really don't, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Origin Jump Perks, as you could probably have told from previous episodes. But the... G12 to me just looks a bit ridiculous and it kind of it's going to be in comparison to other vehicles which look like they have more of a practical application this vehicle will be literally just be a collector's item so it has its role it's a touring vehicle it has some size one uh like two size one laser repeaters on the top which is remote remote turreted so you'd have that sort of thing uh the cost of it is um 60 dollars which is a bit of a bit of a big price considering this vehicle uh it can carry up to two scus worth of cargo so <laughs> but again it, it's literally you're paying for the luxury the price and all that snazzy nature but it's really just a glorified lambo moon buggy which tells me which let which something tells me in the future um they're probably gonna there will be a lambo moon buggy in the real life like irl someone is gonna try it so i, I dread that day <sighs> But regardless, uh, oh boy, uh, yes, this is in fact the same vehicle, just uh, the military version, because for some reason, some numbskull in the military thought it would be a good idea to contact Origin Jumpworks of all the fucking people in the fucking universe. They thought Origin Jumpworks could make a military vehicle. Yeah, I know, it sounds as daft as it sounds. It does, in fact, sound as stupid as it sounds. So, what is this version? Well, basically, what this is, is an anti-air version of the Cyclone. No, sorry, so, yeah, it's basically a Cyclone anti-air, but in Origin Jumpwork style. Uh, this does, though, have better capacity for combat than the Cyclone AA, and that is literally because it has more missiles than it. That's literally it. Um, the Cyclone... Uh, sorry, the G-12A has eight size two missiles um which can be utilized either at enemies or uh, in the sky or enemies on the ground uh but yeah that's literally it um it is a very it's it, its design is more military focused but again it kind of looks like what a military person well a rich person would think how a military conflict works because at no point do they see the potential of them being shot at because there's no defensive capacity uh, for this particular vehicle. Literally, this is a... You keep this in the background and no one touches it. Otherwise, it'll just explode. Um, they've changed the, the wheels to look more rough and edgy. And they've uh, given it more black lines because rough and edgy. Um, you lose the cargo capacity. And maybe you can transport maybe up to a few people. But really, it's not that good. Yeah, like on the th on the website it, on the website um, for G two uh, the on the tools website it basically says it's uh, designed for all offensive ground operations. It's the ideal partner for long range perimeter patrols, intercepting assailants, and exploring dangerous new locales. Okay, so I'm gonna take you aside, G twelve, and say one thing. Sorry, two words. Anvil, ballista. There is a shit. There, there is a there is a vehicle out there that does your job and it can defend itself. What can you do? Exactly my point. Nothing. So yes, the ground-based vehicles fail to impress, uh, like with many of the Origin Jump Works stuff, or at least the the stuff in terms of the problem is the Origin Jump Works fails to make themselves sound snazzy. Uh, sorry, snazzy. Uh, tough. 
a lot of people will take the piss out of Origin Giant Perks because it is for for posh rich wankers um, or knobs or all the like. You know, the kind of people who just have money and shove it in your face and you want to punch them because of how much they're rich asshole snobs. Um, and the problem is they're trying to act all tough when they really can't act all tough. We'll be getting onto that little nightmare in the, sec in the later part of the video. Um, but really, really... Um, they just can't do it. It's it, it you, you just can't do it. But hey ho, at least they try. So going on to the next day, or next ships, uh, these ones continue in along with the Origin 100 series. This is the more militaristic version, the 125A. Now this one trades out uh, a bunch of other components for more military style things. So you have a bit more military components, better shielding, and the like. Um, and they also inc incorporate gimbaled mounted versions of the M4A cannon, which means you actually have size 3 mounts. Now, for those who don't play Star Citizen, um, whenever you see um, a gimbal mount option for a ship, that automatically adds extra value in my eye. Because what you can do is take away the gimbal mounts and slip in uh, and uh, remove the gimbal mounts, because with gimbal mounts, you have to go a size down. Uh, to mount the weapon on the gimbal mount. So in this case, the size 3 gimbal mounts need to have a size 2 weapon for them to work. Well, if you take away the size 3 gimbal mounts and put a size 3 weapon in there, you get the size 3 weapon. It's just fixed, which is a downside. Um, briefly onto gimbal, basically gimbal allows your guns to automatically target. Uh, when you've targeted someone, your guns will align towards the target to shoot for you, so you can focus on flying more, a more noob-friendly way of playing. Or, if you're a dogfighting pilot, the fixed version basically is like World War II. Um, you fire your guns uh, or lasers, and uh, wherever you're pointing your plane is where the target will be. So, depending on your particular preference and play style, that's how it works. So, the 125A series does have that advantage. And I'm not going to lie, this is the only ship in Origin Jump Works I'd be willing to own for that little extra baby part. Like, if I had to take a small ship, if I was limited to a small ship for firepower... This is probably what I will take because this ship can take size threes and probably do some menacing damaging with them. And if it ballistics, you can also avoid dealing with the energy issue, but that's the subject for another day. Another thing that you get with this particular ship, which is lovely, is you get four size two missiles, which is, again, for a tiny ship, this has a lot of potential for dangerous firepower and in the hands of a good pilot can do quite a significant amount of damage. Internally, it's pretty much the same. Um, you've got yourself a little baby cargo bay, a bed to log in on uh, and out on, and uh, the display of the cockpit is also there. But also what I love about this ship, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is it's uh, I, I love the, ca the camo, the paintwork and everything. It just looks good. The lighting, everything. It looks fantastic, and I really appreciate what they've done with that one. So again, this is one of the few ships I will sing the praises of because it looks and feels so good. And when I fly around with it, it also feels pretty damn amazing. I won't lie. Um, it's a very, very pleasant ship. And I look forward to... Um, I, I, may end up, I may end up getting this ship again. Because I actually did have quite a lot of fun. I went with other stuff, but... I'm not going to lie. Looking at this ship again and re I'm remembering... I Yeah. This is the only kind of ship from Origin I probably would ever own. But again, depending on how things go. In the future, it may be different. But hey-ho. So moving from the sort of more militaristic side to the trading side, we have access to this ship, the Origin Jump Works 135C. Now the 135C trades a lot of its firepower. Well, I say it trades its firepower. It still has the size 2s on the gimbals and some missiles as well. So it is still a better version than the size um, than the uh, other version. It's still slightly more up tier. Um, but it also has the capacity to take cargo uh, quite a bit. In fact, six SCUs worth of cargo at the back, which isn't too bad. It's only two away from uh, the... If I'm not mistaken, that's like almost two away from the Avenger Titan. Obviously, it doesn't have its own cargo bay like the Avenger Titan, so it doesn't quite match it in terms of efficiency. But it's not done a bad job. Uh, the miss It has two size 2 missiles uh, and... I said the gimbal mounts, but this one can be replaced with size 3s. In fact, I'm going to quickly go back to the 100s, because I think the the 100i also has uh, the ability for gimbals as well, so it's not really that much different. 
Uh, I'm going to assume. Yeah, so it's you can still attach the size. Yeah, so there was a bit of a correction there. So the 100i also has access to gimbal mounts as well. So there's no real difference in any of these particular ships when it comes to cannons. Uh, but the, the 100, 125 does have access to better missiles. So you make of that what you will. Um, but still, the the 135C does have the ability to transport cargo. So if you're into more taking stuff from A to B and making a bit of a profit, then this ship is for you. Though I would argue that there are better ships for a starter player to uh, immerse themselves in cargo transportation. For example, now, we have the Nomad, which can do quite a lot of things. Um, <laughs> quite a lot of things indeed. Um, but still, it is a interesting concept to start with, being at a price of about forty, uh, forty-five dollars in stand, uh, sorry, fifty in standalone and forty in war bond edition. Uh, this ship does have quite the potential to be a nice introduction to Star Citizen uh, for those who are a little bit more inclined to do pa pass package and parcel missions. So, we introduce ourselves to this room. We'll get down to that in a little bit. Uh, we'll also have a look at that thing. That thing has a bit of an interesting side note, but we'll go into that with a little bit more in depth. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention this little poofart of a snub fighter. This is the 85X. This particular ship came with the 890 Jump uh, when that ship was introduced. And it was uh, Origin Jump Works' attempt at making a snub fighter. Not a bad attempt. Uh, but it does feel very flimsy. Again, it's a luxurious, it's a little luxury pod. Uh, pod fart, maybe? Yeah, pod fart. This is the pod fart. Um, two seating. And it pretty much does what it says on the tin. Uh, and nothing else that's really snazzy. You've got a couple of MFD locations here, here, and here. It's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like just a Porsche. In the form of 890 jump, like it's it's an it's an Origin Jump Works version of a Porsche, um, so you can kind of tell that that's all the usefulness to it. It does have a size one, uh, oh sorry, two size ones uh, lasers repeaters, and apparently two size one missiles underneath. You also have got some turrets. Oh no, it's a turret. Sorry, you've got a turret remote on the bottom, which is two again two size ones. So nothing too snazzy. No missiles. I thought it was missiles, but it's not. It's just turrets. So this thing can defend itself, but it will die very quickly. It's not really designed for combat. Again, this is Origin Jump Works. They're not. Their mainstay is not combat. It is snazzy pazzy. So going from a completely useless vehicle to a vehicle which I fear is becoming almost as bad, but She's an old, very old girl. This is the Origin Jump Works 300i. This was the original Origin Jump Works ship in Star Citizen. Um, this ship has been in... The, like, this is one of the ships that was released back in 2013 and was a prominent sort of uh, advertisement for Origin Jump Works for a very long time. Uh, and the interesting thing I find about this ship is it's design mechanics and philosophy is so radically different to what um, the current ships that are coming out are, which I personally find to be kind of interesting from a historical perspective. But let's get on to the actual features of this thing. So, um, in terms of weaponry, I will go into... You can upgrade the components, by the way, so there's no almost no reason to talk about them to a degree. Uh, and the other little internals. But I will actually mention some of the internals. Uh, size 1 radar, size 1 computer... Uh, pretty much everything size one, uh, two size two coolers, two uh, size two size one coolers, two size one shield generators going to the propulsion, uh, fuel intake. That's fine. There's nothing too impressive on that. Going to the weapons, you've got one size f uh, three auto cannon, well laser auto cannon, but it's still an auto cannon, the M5A, and then you've got two size threes as well on the side wings so they're all the same size and they're all laser focused on that one so they will consume a lot of energy so this thing if you're going into a major fight you might want to get some better cooling systems or better power plant to ensure that your ship doesn't just explode or shut down more likely you also have two size two missiles on the wingtips um which is fair enough nice little rear part the, the, the unique design of this particular ship is as such that um you could it's a very it's a very iconic it's an iconic version of Origin Jump Works. A lot of, nowadays, a lot of people would, if you ask them, you know, what is Origin Jump Works, people would either say the 600 or the 890 Jump is Origin Jump Works is like t 
typical thing that you think of. But for a long time, this was the ship that you thought of when you thought of Origin Jump Works. Now, the unique thing about this ship is that this thing does, in fact, have a cargo bay, and it can carry up to eight SEUs worth of cargo. Now, awkwardly, this ship is very... It's being a bit of a bastard, because I can't quite find the button for it on the back of this ship. But the cargo bay is accessible from the back. You can, you can kind of see it's available here, but I can't seem to get the damn thing to open. So we're going to have to go to the other ships to worry about that. But the design mechanics for this ship is intriguing because this ship has been designed, I said, it was released back in 2013, and you can feel that design mechanics because if you go into the ship, it's that little thing, all of the other variants of this ship have the same internals with the, oh no, the, all but one of the ships have this, uh, of the, in the 300 series, with the exception of the racing vessel, have the same internals. So you go into the ship, apologies for the camera jutting, this is uh, a glitch from Star Citizen's pers perspective, and I'm not too sure whether it's because I got track IR on, and it's trying to get that to work, even though it's not, the program isn't active. So again, mixed bag on that one, but anyway. So you're introduced into the ship, uh, there's your uh, little shitter. But it doesn't. It's. Uh, but the ship, uh, the shitter doesn't have a shower, so it's not a shit shower. It's just a shitter. So no impressiveness there. You do have a fire extinguisher, so you never know. Uh, you have a weapons rack, a little uh, cupboard for your suits, and a little storage fridge for your little fridge stuff. Uh, you've got a little sink basin. No food preparatory sections though. Note that it was just, it's just the sink. There's no hobs, there's no um, means to produce food, there's not much really inside this thing. This is kind of like, it's always been like this design, probably pretty much since its inception in 2013. There's like a little storage bed underneath, but apart from that, nothing else really. Going over to the bed, you have a bed to log in and out of. It doesn't have the option to even say lie or sit down, it's just enter bed. There's a TV available over there if you want to watch some stuff. And if we go over to the cockpit, a little, again, I will try and turn, hopefully the music is relatively quiet, or in this case, gone. <laughs> oh no, it's just started again, god damn it. But as you can see, the Origin UI, uh, there's mainly a holographic design template, but as you can see, the, um, the old style systems for the old style interactive, um, you know, the old style interactive systems for Origin Jump Works still in this game after so long. Um, and it just, it feels like a relic. But this is the interesting thing. This is obviously at the time of their recording, at uh, the time of this thing, in, in terms of ship design, this ship is fairly, I think the design hasn't really changed that much since then. If you guys are a veteran Origin um, owners for 300s, let me know in the comment section down below. But... Like, obviously the UI updates and other stuff has come and gone, but this ship's main core design mechanic has remained the same for quite a long period of time. And the thing I find the most interesting is the ship logic when it comes to how uh, a vessel like this kind of works. Because nowadays, when a ship is made, it's not just the, the snazzy, look at this ship, it's fantastic. This ship goes, look at the ship, and also note how many things it can do. I mean, the MSR, the um, the Nomad, uh, what other ships have been recently introduced? Uh, Prowler. Um, not so much with the Prowler because it is... Well, no, you know, even with the Prowler. Um, a lot of ships that are released nowadays have more than one functionality to them. And yes, this ship has the ability to be a cargo runner, but it only has a CSU's worth of cargo, and it's internal, so you can't really do much with it. Literally, all this ship can do is get you from A to B and maybe be a fighter. But there are ships that can do that and other things. Thus, its value isn't as high as other ships available to it. And I feel that this is... And then this, I could be wrong, but feel free to put in the comment section on this one. I feel that this is a design... This is a design mechanic of old Cloud Imperium. When Star Citizen was in its burgeoning stages and the real intention of these ships was not to have the multifunctionality of these vessels, but was more just to showcase what these ships could be. You know, what these ships look like. How do they fly? How do they do whatever? Nowadays, there's just about... Well, you know, now it's all about we know that they can fly. We know they can do stuff. So what else can they do? What can they improve upon? What was their multi-role ability? And now this could just be a thing of Origin Jump Works that they just cannot multitask to save their life. But a lot of other ships can, in fact, multitask. And I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, put it this way. They can do it. Because why? 
we've got other versions of the um with the 100 series you have the capacity to do multiple things whereas with this ship not so much so again i find this to be a rather fascinating part of the origin uh, 300 series but more in its historicalness because of the old ship design philosophy so before we go into the looking into the larger ships, I thought I'd continue my talk on the 300 series uh, with the other variants in the ship series, starting with the racer edition. So way back when, this is the uh, 300, well, this is the racing edition of the 300, and it's kind of stripped out a bunch of features and luxurious con concept, still maintaining the same weapons and all that jazz, so still, you know, potential, but it's actually designed to go faster and its color scheme and other things are very distinctive of that. Uh, this is the cargo bay that I was talking about, but this is the four SUs worth of cargo bay rather than uh, the... This is four SUs worth of cargo rather than the eight toted by all of the regular sense of stuff. So there you go. So the internals for this one, though, is the only difference uh, between all of the other ships is if we go up into it. Now, it was interesting to note, whilst I was uh, looking up these ships' variants, apparently there was a note in the Starship Tools stated that this ship, uh, that the 300 series, was redesigned and relaunched in 2019. But having flown this ship in, like, 2017, 2016, 2018, to a small degree, like when I was wor working with some friends, I can, to be honest with you, doesn't feel that very different. Kind of feels the same. I think they just probably made it a bit more optimized so it would work in modern day Star Citizen, but it still feels like a very old ship design. But anyway, um, going into this particular factor, um, you can see that the bear, the internals have been changed out and all that's available now. Ah, you see, this this is a rework. The bed is a you can have options now with a bed. Uh, rather than just get into bed, you can actually choose to sit or lie down. Though I think it's more just because of how the bed is arrayed and everything else. So this pretty much goes here to here, and that's pretty much it. There's no living indemnities, there's no useful things. It's literally you go from A to B as soon as possible. And that's pretty much it for that one. But still, the racing variant of the ship looks menacing. I like the paintwork. Uh, but yeah, not that very different. So going over to the... 315P edition of the uh, Origin Jump Works. This is the Explorer variant. Now, this is Explorer variant has a bit of a distinctive difference in the sense that it loses one of its firepower options and instead um, puts a camera on the front. Now, I'm, assu I'm assuming at some point in the future um, it will... Oh, it's a tractor. Okay, so this front bit will be... At this particular front thing is a tractor beam. Which eventually, uh, when the tractor beams are going to be implemented in the future um, editions of Star Citizen, which at this time of recording, 3.12, uh, is going to be introducing, they're implementing a tractor beam variant um, mining at uh, attachment to the uh, handheld miner drill thing. I can't remember what it's called now. Is it Grey Cat? I can't remember, but the handheld utility tool, which is a miner, which everyone uses it for, um, will have the option to have a tractor beam. So this could become a useful thing and eventually could bring the ship back into its own form. Who knows? But it, again, it's in terms of usefulness, this ship uh, is just a... It's just a slightly undergunned version of the Origin Jump Works. The same internals, and there is the... 8 SEUs worth, oh sorry, 12 SEUs worth of cargo. This one has a slightly larger cargo bay because of it, uh, because of its explorer nature. So there we go. Um, if you want to try and act with me. The, internal, the inter internal supply of this cargo means that you can't really do a lot, for example, with you can't transport vehicles. And if you're doing like a bounty hunter role, first of all, why are you using a 300 series? Um, for a bounty hunting role, you can do better. Uh, second of all, um, you can't store the person unless you stuff their corpse inside that little bay there with whatever else you're transporting. But again, I don't think you'd get as much of a payment because people don't pay for spaghetti bolognese. They pay for bounties. So moving on to the last in the series, this is the finger quote military edition of uh, the Origin Jump Works, the 325A. So what is the snazzy edition? What's the thing that takes you to uh, the ultimate form of combat? Well, it, they do, it does have a pretty menacing front weapon. This is a size 4 fixed uh, auto laser. 
So yeah, the M uh, the M six A auto laser, which is yeah pretty menacing. Size four weapons on this kind of ship, pretty big, pretty big. Um, it still has the two size threes, and it's got two, uh, four size. It actually have bumped up the missile rack. You've got four size three missiles now. They can carry up to four SCUs worth of cargo, so it's not as impressive as other ships in terms of cargo capacity, but it does have a pretty menacing gun on the front, and uh, it has a pretty pretty big presence on the field if you were to try and bring it into sort of space combat for that sort of stuff. But again, it's it's intriguing design to philosophy. Again, it kind of hark again. I just I can't help but feel that there's this old sort of philosophy towards the design of this ship, which. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty impressive, and I'm sure the size four auto laser is going to do some menacing damages. Now, probably nowadays this ship probably has a bit of a decent chance against some of the things with the combat um, redesign. Um, and it'll be interesting. You know, I'm half tempted to see what the ship is like in combat. I might even rent this thing just to see what it's like. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my instinctiveness has come in came in there, so I'll, I'll stop to do them. But there we go. So the Origin 300 series. It's intriguing to say the least i might have a look at flying this thing and if i do have any particular if it, if it kind of strikes out at me i might make a video on it but overall i mean for me again i'm not an origin fanboy so this to me is just a snap it's just different versions of the same ship but what interests me at this point in time is the historical nature of this thing the the design philosophy of cloud imperium back in the day because there are some ships that have been that have been implemented that around the same sort of price range as this. I mean, what was it? There was a big sort of toting. Uh, there was a bit of a toter to regarding exploration versus this and the Avenger Titan, I think it was. Like, Law of the West made a video about what ship was better. And, like, whenever I looked at the Origin job works, I'm like, dude, the Origin doesn't stand a fucking chance. Other ships are doing much better than, um, than the Origin job works ships. But who knows? Maybe times have changed. Maybe Origin may have its own feel today. So, now that we've done all of the 300 series, we've now got two ships remaining. Uh, this one, the 600i, and of course the big bugger in the central room, but we'll talk about that one when we get to it. So, this is the 600i, the considered largest ship in the game for a small duration before other ships began, um, before other ships took its mantle. Uh, this is the Touring variant. There is another variant known as the Exploration variant, which trades the Luxury Lounge for the ability to... for, like, a few more hard points and the, uh, more, like, versatile usability sort of thing. But, really, this is, uh, a luxury vessel, uh, first and foremost. So, the unique thing about this ship was that, well, apart from the fact this ship is the first ever large ship that Origin Jump Works made... Uh, well, that uh, Cloud Imperium made for Origin Jump Works. There's a lot of design mechanics and philosophies that were sort of tested out because Origin never really had a ship that you could tour around in and sort of and to discover sort of thing. It was always, it was always a ship, which, as you can see, this is this is what you would call this is what Origin made their first major push into the verse. Uh, this is where the particular ship. Kind of, you can tell by the way the ship's designed and the poorly optimized plant systems because what bugs and slugs will be inside these things? You don't know. So why would you put your head right next to them? But anyway, apart from that, um, going in further into the ship though, you'll sort of start to see the sort of the more luxurious side mechanics of it. This is sort of like a ship that you would take some of your friends on and you'd sort of muck around. They used to be a. Uh, like a little fish tank slash um, viewing hole that you can kind of look at. But for some reason, <laughs> in this particular edition, there's a hole. A very big hole. Uh, which um, there looks to be some kind of thing into it. But I don't think we can get out if we were here. So uh, I'll not chance it. Apparently there is something here, but it doesn't look like it. So we're just going to... We're not going to chance it. But there is a viewing hole which you would look into... You know, you'd look down to and see the universe. Or you'd look at the fish and the fish would be shitting themselves because, you know, they're in space. But hey-ho! It's sort of the main... Sort of the, the mainstay room, which... For some reason, I think they chose the wrong plants for this thing. Because normally what you want to have is some kind of tree in this room. In this, in this uh, self-contained sort of thing. Rather than just plants that barely notice up here. Like, I'm not much of an agriculturalist, but, or anyone along those lines, but what I would do is I would put a tree here. Now, just that to me sounds more like a plan, but 
hey ho. So, moving on, we'll go further explore the ground floor. So this one's more for the cargo decks, and I think this is for the for the staff who would attend the people's needs and all that jazz. So even then, they've got some pretty snazzy things. Not much in the sense of privacy, unless these things have like a little sheet or something that will allow them to do whatever. Uh, there's the showers for both for both of those things. So they staff, even the staff have a sort of semi-luxurious side of things. You can tell by the the flooring as well. The flooring I like. I like the flooring. It's not too bad. Moving on. You have a lift access to the rest of the ship as well. Uh, if you go up these stairs, we go into the more, there's the actual passenger side room. So this room I kind of like because it kind of feels okay. Like it, it's kind of like what I would like in terms of a uh, your own sort of personal bedroom. You know, you're like it's a small enough thing, but you've got a little couch and stuff. But you like your phone and all the other bits there whilst you're flying. There's also apparently some kind of glass sheet thing which will come up as well, which looks kind of cool. Shows the internal temperatures, and again, it's a shower uh, and a separate shitter, which is kind of a thirst for the thing. So we go into the thing. These bedrooms pretty much replicate themselves. Uh, sometimes they're flipped, but nothing again. No again, nothing too fancy. If you go into here. You have, once again, another bedroom. So you've got four bedrooms uh, with the ability to do a lot of stuff. Uh, I think that's the bridge as well. I'm going to go away towards the bridge. Uh, a few more escape pods, literal pods as well. And you go into the and if you go into the bridge section, you can see some of the issues. A lot of empty space, not a lot of things you can do with it. Yes, it's an origin jump works, but there's a lot of opportunities for you to do something here that you don't. You've got two crew members and the captain's seat. Which I think also acts as the pilot. Is that the pilot seat? I think that's the pilot seat. Yes, it is the pilot seat. So you have a very wide, very open view. I'm sure it will probably raise you up a bit or change the things up. Uh, let's have a look. See. It's been a while. It's, I think it's. I have the last time I was in this thing. I think it was back in like 2019 uh, to 2949 as well. Um, so yeah, the view from the cockpit is massive, wide, and pretty impressive. 180 view distance from left to right, which is not too bad. And, uh, slight issue, I'm probably, there's a few, uh, MFDs and holographic stuff that'll be there. Yeah, so there's a few MFDs that'll be in front of you as you sort of fly around through the verse. But, again, could have been done better. There are some, there are some design mechanics which are not so great, but for me, I'm like... Again, I have no intention of flying or buying this vehicle because, again, it's Origin Jump Works, you know. But it is a pretty impressive, luxurious liner for that. So, going over to the back area. Take your time, obviously, because these doors take forever to walk through. So, going over to this room. Make our way across. And if you open up this door, you have access to the internals, the actual decent lighting but because of the uh buggy nature of uh display models uh <laughs> this one just has a, a room to nowhere and a room to nowhere um but this room i would say is the big selling point this is yeah this is the big selling point of the 600i touring edition um you've got really badly designed seats that will probably cause back in back strain but hey ho it's a posh thing and they're really far away from the from the they're really far away from the um, the bar, so good luck trying to get your drink without trying to lean over like some ape. Uh, you've got a massive view spectacle from the rear, so you have the ability to sort of enjoy stuff. Uh, sunken in seating, which looks kind of cool, not going to lie. But again, it's sunken, and that's like one of the few bits of this room that I kind of like. Uh, going over into this, you've got a nice big flashy TV the actual reason why I like this room, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, opening up some of the doors, you've got some of the... the oh, they've changed out some of the... Uh, yeah, they've actually changed out some of the... Ah, oh, no, not quite. Um, <laughs> I was going to say they've changed out some of the internals to actually make them more like an actual usable ship. And then I noticed the protein shakes and I thought, ah, there's the douchebag. <laughs> uh, more chairs that are a little bit better situated i do like the marble nature it's again it's very very posh it's like golden into a marble and it's all of who's so snazzy and who's so impressive and it's very posh and very impressive. but no the actual reason why i like this room ignore all that is this pool table i like this pool table it's pretty snazzy it's the character's got a slightly better one 
but this one has got some pretty dope things inside so yeah this is pretty cool i can't wait for the if i have if someone said to me hey um you want to play pool on on the 600 io got i'll be like yeah sure and that'll literally be all i will have the interest for this ship you can play pool on it uh going down into here you have access to more internal components this lighting i fucking love um sadly again display models are a little bit buggy but still you go into this room as this door was preemptively showing and you have access to more of the internal options and i think if you can choose you can open up some of these uh doors there you go that will be where modules and other stuff will be in but again it's the display model it's not perfect it's more buggy um so it's not perfect but you do get to see all of the internals and how these all work so that is pretty cool um in terms of usability but again <laughs> this is a 600i it's not that fancy i mean again it's a fancy ship and it's designed for the more luxurious things and this was origin jump works's first major push into large ship design that was made available in uh i said origin jump works cloud imperium's major first push of uh, origin jump works you know they had to come up with a lot of these thing, these particular concept designs and these particular systems hadn't been done before uh, to the same scale normally everyone was expecting an origin jump normally when it came beforehand like origin jump works was a ship that was designed, you know, a ship company that did have large ships, but nobody had seen what they could be like. So when you have, uh, so when you have Origin Jump Works and, you know, avoid the, the gap there. So when they, when Cloud Imperium decided to go with the Origin Jump Works 600, you can kind of see, so they, they kind of had to come up with a lot of concepts that hadn't been done before in terms of luxury in a Star Citizen style manner in like it, like imagining a luxury in a ship designed 900 years into the future. So for what it's worth, I'd say they did a pretty decent job in making a mid-range um, large like sort of cruiser liner sort of thing. But in terms of... Yeah, in t again, in terms of like actual defense... Um, in terms of like design mechanics... Does the I mean for me I, I can't really say a lot about it because I'm really not overly fussed about um, the Origin 600 series and again kind of the same well slightly different for the 890 jump but that's because it's in kind of integral to one of the missions that I do on a fairly um, what I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry this is why I love Star Citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Please do do what I think you're about to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> so without further ado. We'll wrap today's episode up by looking at the big bastard in the main room. This, of course, is what probably loads of people know what Origin Jump Works is now. Um, or is all about now. Which is big fucking luxury. What the fuck? Oh, big luxury. Um, and basically the biggest ship in the game thus far, which I feel sad for. I cannot wait for another ship to break this record. Hopefully, it's not an alien ship. And I'm hoping it's some it's not another origin jump works, but you can't deny this is a pretty menacing beast. And so we finally come to the end of our journey, but not before well, one last step before the end is of course the 890 jump. This thing was the big total palace machine, uh, released at 3.7. And uh, was quite the big was like the big sort of announcement of this thing. And obviously she is the current record holder for the largest ship in that's flyable in Star Citizen. And you can see why. It's a big fuck-off ship. Um, I'm hoping one day this ship does get replaced. Uh, hopefully by... Hopefully by a non-Origin Jump Work ship, as mentioned earlier. But, unfortunately not. But depending on your kind of crew... Uh, depending on your profession, you'll either see this a lot or not really at all. Uh... During, I think, 3. Point, I want to say 3.7, sorry, sorry 3.9, 3. I believe, uh, but potentially 3.10, the, I think it was 
Or maybe even 3. Point, no, it was 3.8. I can't remember. I think it's either 3.8 or 3.9. Uh, the Origin Jump Works, um, this 890 jump, was actually featured and turned into a hub for a mission known as Boarding Action in Process. And basically, uh, a progress, um, where you go onto an 890 jump that's been boarded by uh, raiders and you clear it out whilst also attempting to stop a data transfer being made. So you'd come in via the side air pods or the, uh, the side access panels, which if we make our way towards it. There you go. So you'd enter in through here, make your way towards the main entrance lobby and into the place whilst also dealing with uh, all sorts of raiders and ne'er-do-wells and then I'd, I'm, I've, I've gone into this place ship so many times to kill people <laughs> it's rather embarrassing like my first instinct is to go into these first two rooms because that's where the uh the data transfers is often toted but it also can be placed is that other fish in there have they actually upgraded the modules uh no no they have not but anyway, so this was a big ship of 2949. Um, it uh, had some it had some pretty impressive things. The bath, the luxury bathrooms for some of the guests and the status stasis owners, stasis owners, status owners, and the like have come through, and it's exactly the same. Oops. Now nah, this is the lighting I'm used. This is the lighting I'm used to. Uh, right. That is the lighting I'm used to seeing this ship in. <laughs> so weird not having it like that. <laughs> but anyway. Um, this is a pretty impressive ship, even if it's Origin Jump Works. Uh, this is the... It's taken the concepts from, that were utilized for the 600 series, and uh, and obviously criticisms as well, um, and implemented them in a much more impressive and uh, snazzier sort of style and fashion. My major complaint is the bathrooms, because it kind of looks like these things will basically get flooded if you're wanting to have a bath. Because if you're wanting to sit down, you want to lay down and have this bath, the water can only go up to a certain point before it starts spilling over the top. Unless, of course, you're wanting to waste all the water. And I'm guessing you do or you don't. But, again, this is a very weird bathroom design. But I think, again, it's origin. Nothing is really meant for practicality. So, going further into the ship, we'll go from the ground level. And then we'll go sort of our way up to the top before coming back down again. Uh, you have two... You have two ax uh, escape pods. And if you call the elevator, you can call the elevator to take you to the lower or upper floors. Or in this case, just the lower floor. And going to the other side, same similar thing. You've got access to uh, elevator on this side. But you also have access to a ladder, which takes you down to engineering. And arguably, that is the safest option for you when it comes to getting down to the ladders. Because if you're with multiple people and you get into the same elevator, there's a chance you'll get thrown to the bottom. And potentially, you don't get crushed by the elevators, but you do potentially can fall through the ship. So, something you have to be careful of. So, going further into this area, you s you will see the very nice looking pool slash spa or whatever. Which is very funky looking. No real water uh, reactions to you in the thing at the moment. As you can see, no... It's almost as if I'm not even in water. So, it's something that they're working on, but it is a functionality... The water is there, you know, it, it, it is physically there, it is stewing something, so that is impressive, to say the least. And this is, I think, the first time we've actually had water on a ship, so give it credit, it, it was able to do that. And there's like a little sort of, uh, sweat box rooms, and a shower to sort of cool down in, and then if we go further into the field, we get more rooms to sort of the changing rooms. And the like, and then of course you go into this room, the swimming pool. I'm normally used to seeing bodies in the swimming pool because the amount of times I've done that boarding action in progress. <laughs> God, oh, I can't help but feel a slight sense of satisfaction when I see that as well. I'm like, ha ha, you rich snob bastards. Uh, but anyway, so there is the swimming pool. It's very nice. It's very luxurious. Um, I think. The lights are on, so it's a bit of a dark room. Maybe the, when the lights are on, it's more lit up or whatever. But it is a swimming pool. So, yeah. Pretty pretty impressive looking swimming pool. So, making our way out towards the upper areas. 
Now, obviously, when this ship gets uh, in, put into the game, you will find that there are some things that will be populated or not. You may actually get rid of this horrible-looking statue, uh, like whatever the fuck this is called, because it's ugly. Um, in the cutscene you, uh, that sh for showing off this thing, there was the woman singing up there, and there was a bunch of rich snobs over here, uh, and it looks pretty impressive. Like, the view from the top is actually quite nice, though this does confer a tactical disadvantage if you're trying to hold this ship and boarders are trying to figure out what's going on, because they can just look in through the sides and to the points and basically report your position to all their friends who are trying to board into it. This room is a bitch to take, though, because there's a lot of areas where you can get shot at uh, from above. So you can get shot at from above, from the sides. Um, these are not breakable. Um, you, you can't shoot. The AI won't shoot. If you're doing the boarding action in progress, AI won't shoot at you. Uh, the, I think it's because it's like a, because of, although it's a glass wall, um, it is a physical wall nonetheless. And if you try and shoot at it, it'll just stop the bullet. So it's not destructible. So um, it's a good opportunity to sort of dodge into it. But sometimes the AI likes to camp here. Uh, sometimes they camp over there as well, so you have to be a bit mindful. Coming up the stairs is where it's most risky, because there are some AI dudes who will chill here, and as you're making your way up the stairs, either side, they can they can and will take a pot shot at you, if you're not careful. Normally, there's a couple of dudes here as well, and sometimes there's one dude who's even here. So you've got to keep your eyes peeled when it comes to clearing out this room. As you make your way towards... Um, I'm like how I'm going from a uh, touring of this thing to how to clear it out from combat. So we'll go to the bar section a little bit later, but let's just say for the time being, you need to clear it up to the bridge. So once you've taken care of the combatants on the side here, there may also be some dudes chilling out in the background towards where the uh, captain's room is. This is a bit of a bitch to take because they have the advantage you don't. Because from uh, from this point onwards, they can sh from about mm, this point onwards they can shoot you. So you need to rapidly get behind this cover and try and hold off your own, and then basically once you got into here, it's kind of a simple case of going around the corners, popping off shots whoever's to whoever's taking cover here. The AI doesn't really tend to move a lot at the moment. They do move in some areas, but not so much in the 890 jump, and then you basically can just move to clear out the side points. Um, the AI never tends to be in the bridge, so the bridge tends to be a place you don't have to worry about looking, but it's still worth going in there because... Um, there are the uh, there is the possibility that the when they update this game that they may change the location of the data transfer thing So it's worth clearing the bridge just in case So this is the particular bridge and as you can see from the 600 series. There's a lot more to this ship um, There's a lot more to the uh, the bridge. There's more functionality involved I think this works like I think if you're flying the ship you'll get like it's like it works like the radar dish uh, the radar does in the Carrick but I can't honestly remember 100% of the time. But I can... I think this does work similar to the Carrick. Though I could be wrong. But either way, snazzy thing. Cockpit's a little better designed now. You enter into the pilot seat. It's still similar in regards to the design mechanics. But it's the view from this ship going into the front section of the... There you go. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a little. It looks. It's a little bit more optimized. The view isn't perfect, but it's a lot better than the 600 series. I'm not a veteran of flying either the 600 or the 890, so I can't tell you which is better. But I can tell you it is better. Uh, it looks better, and I quite enjoy this sort of thing. So who knows? Maybe. Maybe that's just what it is. Anyway, moving out of the bridge towards the captain's quarters, um, you will find that the. AI never tend to be in here, so this is kind of a moot point, but I always tend to clear this room just in case there's a random scrap AI who somehow, despite the gods, um, basically, uh, yeah, despite the, the, the despite the chances, has somehow been able to fall into this area, so or gone into this area. So you clear out towards this position, going into the captain's uh, meeting room, and a little model of the ship that he is on, because... Because why not? You know? Why not? If you're a smug bastard, you want to have one of your own ships on the thing, of course. Going into the captain's bedroom, um, big luxurious thing. Again, check to see if there's any chances of um, the data transfer tag being put into it. Normally, you'd find it in... I don't think you'd find it in the bathroom, but there's always a chance that they might be hacking from there. You might have it on the TV, but I've never seen it in this particular location, so it's probably never going to be here. Moving towards the door that doesn't want to open. Come on, door. Open, you little shit. Oh, you fucker. Come on. 
Yeah, good, we're safe. The door's glitching out, of course. Uh, this is the captain's sort of own personal dining area slash convenience point. And you can tell he's a knob. Um, but from the looks of it... Yeah, so, again, the, it looks pretty impressive. There's another image of the ship that he's flying in because he has to be remembered every time he wakes up. What ship am I in? And he looks to the right. Oh, yeah, I'm in this ship. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so moving out of the captain's bedroom towards the main atrium again. Really nice view. If you're on the if you're if your backside is towards a planet, um it's a very nice view, especially when the sun rises. I won't give won't deny on that one. I mean the view from this ship is truly remarkable. Um when you're in Atmo or when you're above a planet or whatever. That's probably where this ship shines the most in my eye, but that's just me personally. So moving on to the middle deck now, we're gonna proceed towards the other two locations where the uh, objective could be check these two bedrooms and they'll probably be along this little thing hooked up to the side and Again, they're pretty much the same design philosophy in bedrooms Which you open up and there you go. So there's that and Make your way across to the other side again check to see if this window has the ability has the uh, option or has the Data transfer object in same thing pretty much the same design in terms of bedroom logic so going further afield, uh, you get access to these rooms, which are sort of bathrooms for people inside the bar area. Uh, when it comes to AI, um, they generally tend to stick to the room ahead of the bar. Uh, but sometimes they will bum rush you inside this area, depending on how much you've cleared out of this particular ship. If you've kind of gone from the ground up, which is like from the cargo bay up to this location, and there's a few of them left... When there's like less than the three AI, they tend to kind of bum rush you a little bit. I think it's kind of like a suicide pact at this point. So there is something to keep an eye out for. But AI tend not to come into this room, so you do have some time to prepare. But of as always, be prepared. Uh, there doesn't tend to be any kind of um, objects for the data transfer object to stick onto. So that's fine. Cover is pretty good if you try and approach it from this side. But the issue with this uh, particular area is that you have to walk up to the doors in order for them to open. Uh, AI tends to be either here or here. So uh, when you're making your initial en entrance, you kind of want to commit to one side and try and move around towards the flank. It's not optimal, I realize, but unless you want to try and kite them out, which is possible, but again, the AI could just be sitting there doing nothing, so you'll have to go in. You either have to commit to the right or to the left. Both sides have equal levels of cover, so as long as you know how to, as long as you lean and you take care when you're running through this position, you should be fine. Moving further afield, we actually go to one of the last few locations where I've been able to find the, um, one of the things on the upper floors. This is really bright. Way too much white. Oh, it's too much. Um, you'll find that this little dish on this point here is where the data transfer object is also located. So, um, the... It's a, it's a good idea to kind of rush through up to here. I, this, when I found the things, uh, found the uh, data transfer objects, I... Uh, they, those locations I've listed are generally the locations where you want to find them. But that's just, you know, my own personal thing. I might make a more dedicated video on this, depending if you guys want to hear it sort of thing. So let me know in the comment section, or I might just make it of my own accord anyway. So, yeah, it's each to its own. But this room is the big meeting room. This is probably one of the bigger features of the 890 Jump, and probably why some orgs and clans want to have this thing, because basically they want to simulate real-life meetings inside the game internally and i reckon once this game gets fully more developed and it goes into live we may see some real honest development coming out of this so definitely looking forward to what this ship uh, and its crew can potentially do in the future reference so big thumbs up from me we actually when this ship first came out and i wasn't too familiar with it i was actually part of a guard detail inside this ship um whilst uh, bsi and another clan had a meeting they was kind of like trialing it just to see what was going on but yeah we had it and it was dope. And someone tried to board us, and we killed them. And it was fun. So, all, all, all in all, it was a nice old experience. You motherfucking... There we go. It's a door that works on swearing. So, going further afield. Weird kind of lighting, but okay. Again, this is the display model, so it's going to be a bit janky. So, going further afield, we'll now go into this uh, little door room area here. I apparently... 
the data transfer object could potentially be here. I've never seen it be in here, but it's always worth checking this just in case. Um, any kind of main sort of display model things here, anything like this, you'll want to keep your eyes peeled for, just so that way uh, you can easily figure out where that thing is. Bearing in mind, when I say the data transfer object is a sort of a thing, it's essential but not important. It's not a mission critical thing. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go down to the crew and kitchen. So this elevator takes you down to, first of all, the spa room, or you can take it down to hit the crew quarters and the kitchen area, so where the dumb waiter is, uh, which I, I always kind of find hilarious that there is a dumb waiter system here, or in this case, a smart waiter because of the elevator, but anyway, internal fridge as well, or internal freezer slash fridge, so if you want extra stuff from that, there you go. Um, another little ordering sort of thing there, but... Again, it's kind of like any kind of um, flat pieces of thing here. There may be a data transfer thing. But mainly it's to serve as a bonus. If you do this, you get an extra few thousand in your currency as you go along. So, okay, if memory serves correctly, we're going to be making our way towards the rear of the ship. So going to this point, uh, generally there isn't anything too snazzy around here. Nothing too worth important. But this room is important more for players than it is for anything else. This is considered the war room, finger quote. Uh, this is a set secondary bridge that you will take, which doesn't at the moment work very well because they've yet to design a system to allow you to see a holographic display of the uh, of a view of your ship. Uh, but if your ship is being invaded by borders, then what you can do is you can get into this uh, seat and probably just fly it in third person if you don't want to be boarded and like knocked out by board. If 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 your if your ship is being boarded and you want to protect yourself from them in a more secure manner then going into this room is probably the better option but at the moment the functionality for that doesn't really work which is a bit of a shame so going over to the rear of the ship we are introduced to a few things first of all this is uh, an opportunity for you to take an elevator down to the engine decks but we won't take it because i don't really trust the elevators in this thing this this elevator potentially is a bit janky um, if there's more than one person, don't take the lift. Just one at a time is my personal preference. So here is an opportunity for you to spot enemy forces before you even do anything. Um, and it was also a bit of a risky location because this is where the security crew of the 890 will also be. So you can move your way down south into this room here and work your way along the stairs. The enemy can't shoot you on the stairs, but there will be a load of them in this room. There are some boxes you can use to take cover, but they're, the, but they're located at the far side of each point. So it's not really worth uh, worrying too much about. Um, but the AI guards who are wearing all white will be around here, sort of this location. And either, depending on how they have been, uh, depending on how they fared, there'll either be a couple of them still alive, or they may be all dead. Normally they're all dead, so this never is a problem. But if they're all alive, check fire. Otherwise, if you do kill them... You fail a bonus pa you fail to get a bonus and you'll get a crime stat, which is a bit of a bad thing. So definitely check fire. If it's white, uh, don't shoot it. Um, if it has well, this is a bit of a contextually bad thing to say, but if it looks like a raider, it bad guy. If it's all white and looks sleek, then don't shoot. Um, so that's where a number of the raiders will be. But going into these rooms, which are equally the same, you get access to the engine room. And generally, sometimes there there is well, there are occasional dudes who will chill in this room. Uh, so it's worth clearing it out. And this is where... I just realized this thing looks really different from the window. Very powerful engine there. But this is the elevator, which if I send it down... This is the elevator that you can send to uh, from the top to have to basically send you to kind of come down into attack. This is kind of a this is a good bet slightly more. I've tried this method a couple of times. It's an interesting way to come about because you have the opportunity to sort of jump out of this room and get to cover along these boxes here and begin to engage the enemy from the ground up. Whereas over by the stairs, they have a chance to pop you in the face a bit if you're not careful. But 
again it's kind of a mixed bag because sometimes when one entrance kind of leaves you vulnerable but another entrance doesn't so it's up to your discretion if you feel more secure going down the stairs i don't blame you i kind of feel more secure going down the stairs because it's a, it's it's there's less risk of you falling through the ship as well it's not the ship isn't bad bad but there are occasional days where like you'll fall through the ship but for the sake of clarity let's make our way towards engineering this lift also takes you all the way up as well so it's not just for one it is for other ships as well i think this is engineering so let's go to crew deck if it wants to work no oh no it does so you can take the lift to go all the way up if you should so choose but i'm obviously not because we've already done that so therein is a way for you to get through so if you want to go through this way this is where the ammunition racks are let's open these doors up a bit there you go. So we've got weapons racks on each side. So if you're defending the ship and you've got a security crew or if you're part of BSI and you've been a, and you've been tasked to defend this place, this is where we would store the weapons and you can basically get your weapons and sort of make your way along towards that point. So going along, uh, nice long hallways. Uh, AI tends to not be here, so that's fine. You can examine this room if you want to find a data transfer thing, but it's not really that functional. This room does have a medical bed and if I'm not mistaken I think this room does work as a medical bed as well though it's kind of I don't think it works as well I don't think it's as streamlined as a Carrick's one but I think it does work you can respawn here if you want to but again it's not that fancy and it's kind of eh so I don't really know uh the Excuse me, but yeah, so this area is another location to keep an eye out for, uh, if there's any... There's, generally, there's nothing here but to be worried about, but again, if you're looking for the ground floor items, uh, the ground floor um, data transfer objects, uh, that's something to keep an eye out for. But I won't lie, I will need to put more research into this, but I've never seen where they... I don't know the locations of the ground data transfer objects are on the ground floor. Um, I honestly don't know where they are. Um on the for the ground floor locations which is a bit of a shame uh but i will again put more into i might try to do some more research into doing that sort of thing for the next episode or for the for an episode on this thing so this room this kind of these two rooms entering into it is an airlock system which you can sort of wait to pressurize because this is the main hangar area now the risky thing about this particular job is um you've got i don't know just people just jumping onto the thing the issue with this room is that these doors uh, suffer from the same issue that if there's AI standing right next to them, the doors can get a bit bugged and they may not open. Or if they open they won't cl and then they close, they won't open ever again. So you have to be careful. Second, you'll only have a few seconds, you maybe have a split second to decide whether the person standing here is friend or foe. Um, because both will be, uh, because the AI, in the AI guards are also here. Again, they tend to be dead. But sometimes they've even held their own and killed a majority of the enemy forces already there. So it's a mixed bag as to whether or not um, they do or do not uh, have the ability to sort of survive here. Generally in the center of this particular thing, you will find a uh, 300 series. I think the 315, uh, maybe, um, of Origin Jump Work series. So you've got a ship inside, which at the moment, at the time of this recording, you can in fact um, steal. Though, sadly, the hangar system doesn't work, which is a shame. If we have it open up here, this is the hangar door system, which allows you to open up and receive ships inside. Um, you can receive a number of ships internally if you want to. Um, it's better for you to open, if you're going to operate this ship like a baby carrier, you really do need to open the hangar. You need to send the elevator up with the hangar doors because it is extremely dangerous to not do that. Just saying. Because um, when that happens, the ship, uh, the ship tends to the gravity sort of the gravity um, systems internally will work, and your ship will go thump onto the ground if you try and land it internally with this thing. So you've got to be kind of careful. Um, obviously, dumb question, dumb, dumb thing to say, but still. Make sure the ship isn't moving when you're doing it. I know some of you idiots like to fly and do stupid stuff if you do that. So just don't. Otherwise you'll be in shit. Like your ship will explode. Both sides, in fact. So these doors are the manned turrets. Uh, there are two of them for you to man. There are also turrets that the crew in the captain's... Um, 
in the captain and the bridge and the captains are the, will have access to remote turrets but there are two manned turrets as well let's enter one of them i think this one's just the bow turret yeah you go so turret comes out and as you can see it's a pretty big menacing turret and the let's have a look see if it tells me what thing so the man there's two size uh so four size four m6a's later auto cannons which is pretty pretty powerful not going to lie you've got two of them uh there are two size uh there one and there's also two remote turrets utilizing uh size three um panther laser repeaters but those are the remote turrets so so there's one of them at the back here and then there's one that's sort of i believe down below so that gives you an access hydration level declining yeah my character's getting really thirsty very quickly i'm wondering if it's because i'm wearing this suit in this in this probably uh because i'm wearing this suit in a hot environment and my guy's like sweating buckets so we'll probably need to get him out of the suit fairly quickly so hangar doors are closing which is pretty cool there is a basketball arena there as well hopefully one day we can play it and we're making our way back towards the other component so this is the area i tend to finish my missions at when it comes to doing the boarding action in progress and then i make my way towards over here and this is kind of where i fear some of the uh data transfer objects may be located there may be one located here on this point as well inside this sort of offshoot room i love this pool table i love the red nature also can i just say lighting much look at the way the room goes red when i put my lamp on it that's really cool that's really really cool <laughs> anyway reflecting light that's very well done anyway so keep your eyes peeled for that it could be sort of located there there's pods for civilians to escape from and then there are all of these baby rooms where people might be sort of putting yourself in so this is where this part of the game or this part of the ship is mental um it's uh yeah it's a, it's a pretty freaking big ship and unfortunately i fear this is where you'll have to probably this is again i i don't know where the ground vehicle on the ground floor where the sh the ships are well where the uh, ground based yeah lower level areas where the data transfer object is located but it could be there i'm hoping it's not but still um it could be there so we make our way towards the crew serving in quarters because that's more like where the crew would be situated. And making your way across. This takes us back to the full circuit of the kitchen which then takes us to the dumb way to lift but it's a sort of more intelligent waiters. And... God, I can't wait to get out of this fucking thing. I've heard that woman shout to Great Gatsby! It's like 300 fucking times. Oh, I hate the ship sometimes. I, again, I prefer this ship when it's not when it's been taken out by pirates because then that sort of smug, rich pride of theirs has been spoiled by raiders. And I just smile because it's like, yep, all your wealth and money didn't protect you from shit. <sighs> I think I might do that when I come when I finish recording this just to equate random boarding action in process just to sort of despite this ship. <laughs> anyway, so you gain access to the elevators, or in this case, you don't, because this thing's a little bit. Um, I think I have to wait for the elevator to wait. To, I have to wait for the elevator to come down, which is a bit shit. Um, but yeah, there you go. So the 890 jump. Uh, my character's very thirsty. Holy shit. Um, yeah, the 890 jump. There is a cargo bay inside. I forgot to mention there is a cargo bay inside the uh, the front S front part of the ship. I oh, sorry, the front part. The cargo bay where we were located at the rear part of the ship but um and it does have access to you can put vehicles and other stuff into it Whee! Boof. oh bollocks and i've fallen through the planet well shit <laughs> well look there's another person he fell too <laughs> oh shit <laughs> there's microtech in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about being thirsty anymore. <laughs> so, there you guys go. This one's pretty bit of a bit. This one's uh, probably going to be quite a long video, but I hope you guys have enjoyed. 
this is, of course, Origin Day. And But don't forget, guys, there is, of course, the famous RSI uh, Day coming up in, well, at the time of this recording, in a few hours. Uh, so you'll probably see this video coming out. Probably this alongside the RSI video as well. So RSI video is probably going to be a bit, little later uh, because there's been a bit of a, a bit of a hit with the recording. But still, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments section down below. And I will hope to see you then. Uh, well, I hope to see you on the RSI day. And I think that will possibly be it. But I'll see if there's anything else that we'll have to sort of worry about. Because I think after this... I'm trying to think if there's any other major ship developers. That looks like it's about it. So we're probably going to have like a few days where it's like you can enjoy all of them at the same time. But we'll see. We will see. So I hope to see you then. This is Mr. Jaeger signing out.